Hi, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for Friday, December 17th, 2021. Oh my goodness, it is solstice season. Um, so let's see, if you are joining us for the first time, uh, be sure to hang out with everybody here in chat if you're here live. And then also we have um, our questions tab where if you have any questions, please do drop your questions in the questions tab for us. All right, so fantastic as always. We got people from everywhere, Australia, Cali, Atlanta. Um, yeah, thank you all for being here. Maine, Flagstaff, Arizona. Hey, <laughs> hi, Mary. Let's see. So, um, exciting right now there's just so much going on um here today i met indian hot springs I'm taking my my weekend i've been working many hours a day and many days a week so i have to take a break here um get away so i don't work as much um so uh a lot of updates i want to share with you guys today there's been uh some some great advancements with the tools, uh, some things that we talked about last week that people had questions with, um, that we've done some updates with the tools here over this week. But before we get started, let's start with taking our three breaths to go into the heart space. Some tea or coffee. Okay, so Moving into the heart space, moving from the head back into the physical heart. Simply closing your eyes, putting your attention onto your heart, your light within your heart. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that loving energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Next, connecting heart to heart to creation, breathing in that light of creation source soul creator god into the heart as you breathe in the energies of both earth and creation those lights come in expand the light within your heart your light some deep breaths as your light expands out into this field this beautiful co-creative space that we have held here for all of us here in support of one another from that higher light, not the human to human. And the support that we hold for everybody who will ever see this. So these fields are getting pretty tangible and a lot stronger these days. Um, you know, especially the field that we all hold together, which is pretty phenomenal. All right. So um, I don't have questions from the Internet, from uh, email. So you're welcome to drop your questions in here. But otherwise, we'll go through some of the updates that have been going on. Um, one of them is last week somebody asked about the... Um, the tree of rings, the alchemist sets. And we have put the energetics of that water ring, um, that wisdom water, that wisdom field, that wisdom field is in all of the alchemist sets now. So if you have that set of three rings, the harmonizer, the chalice, and the divine I am, whether it is a pendant, a practitioner set, or any set, they now hold that energetics of the wisdom ring. Um, each ring of that trio will still have its own energetics, its own personality, um, its, its own field. But then when the three come together, they are holding that field of that wisdom. Um, so, and that translates to any of the wisdom or any of the alchemist sets that you might have that you own already so i mean when we do the update it covers everything um so that has been a really exciting update is the 
alchemist sets now holding the energetics of the wisdom now that field of the wisdom ring it's not um it it's being designed more and more so that it's not an overpowering field um you might have heard me discussing the whole concept of having a ladder and each of the rungs of the ladder are what it is that you resonate with um you know whether it is maybe the the spurling tools the original 144 177 megahertz stuff or maybe it's the galactic ascension or the harmony not not to put them in a hierarchical order but just that they are different for 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 just for mind's sake uh rungs on the ladder and so when you with that wisdom field it's like the wisdom field is the entire ladder that entire structure that entire energy field and so like let's say with the um the harmon sorry with like the harmonizer ring let's say out of the alchemist set um it has a certain energetic but then when you step into there and you come into that wisdom field it just takes you to the highest point <sighs> what what exactly i mean by this um to give an example of of how how i feel what i'm seeing as like this ladder effect takes place um you know like my sister brenda over the past couple weeks she's had a few clients you know um and, and some come in with you know just all kinds of energetic issues and just things going on and you know just a lot of stuff um and they're it's not like they are, um, you know, practitioners, energy workers, anything like that. They're, you know, just your normal everyday person. And they come in, Brenda holds these fields and it's like they step in with all these things going on. And by the time they're done with the session, you know, Brenda's being shown how these people can now just walk into a room and clear the entire room and every person in the room with simply their attention onto it it's huge it's um it, it's like instant mastery you know well and of course we're never going to master things but i mean it is taking us from whatever rung of consciousness that you're on and it's just taking you to the ceiling and of course, we're always dissolving ceilings, but it just takes you right in there. And with grace and ease, you don't have to go through all of the, the stuff. It's not like you jump from one stepping stone to the next and have to do all that work that's required to get to the next stepping stone to the next rung, anything like that, because it's, it's just this new energy, this new energy of, you know, as we talked about in the December 3rd, um, 50 questions Friday and please do listen to that if you haven't um, because it is bringing you into that zero point space it is bringing you into into you that alignment with you where all of that other illusion matrix whatever you want to call it our experiences um, where we are focused with our consciousness and our creations all of that we step beyond it so that's how we can step beyond the healing work um, that we've traditionally done of having to go in and and clear this and release that and and all of these things these energies anymore are allowing everybody to step right up to that top rung to the ceiling so the reason that i'm spending so much time explaining this is because this is huge because don't lose heart on this earth i mean holy smokes people can shift in an instant and that is the point of you know of that chat is that things can shift in an instant and um you know the more that we hold our own space and that's it is that we don't have to go out and do anything you know as light workers we used to go out and fight the dark which is part of duality, which we don't do anymore. That's, well, you can, but, but fighting the dark is just perpetuating the duality experience. And the more that we can just 
focus on ourselves and be within and just, you know, hold that space from that place, the quicker everybody around can step into your field and be taken to their ceiling. Anyway, enough of that fun stuff. All right. So um, let's see. Uh, just a couple other announcements that I wanted to make, and then we can go on with some questions. Um, one of the uh, questions last week was, can we anchor columns of light with the new wisdom wands? Um, the answer last week was no. Holy smokes. You can now use the wisdom wand to create the column of light, just like in our videos, light anchoring 3.0 or else if you go to the um, to the resources page on Twisted Sage, there's a light anchoring page there. Um, but anyway, that, that video, Light Anchoring 3.0, it just kind of walks you into becoming the column of light, giving you attunement to the golden fire and light wand. Basically, you do that same process, but you use the wisdom wand. Because the wisdom wand, it has that connection to create that that column of light that will stay for as long as is needed if not indefinitely but when you anchor a column of light using the wisdom wand it also creates a very tangible field of that wisdom energy right around it so it is anchoring in and holding this wisdom energy now the reason this wisdom energy is so huge is because like with water if you anchor this column of light into a um into a holding tank for water, it is going to shift water more than just a column of light will because this wisdom field, it's doing the same as it does for like the human, uh, for like the plant. It is connecting it to its highest potentials. It is connecting it to its zero point, its, its consciousness. And when it does that, it transcends all of the crap. So with water, it is bringing in the highest potential vibration of water, the consciousness more into water, and it is physically restructuring water instantly. So columns of light with the wisdom wand into water is huge, into electromagnetics, everything, everything. So that segues us into our event that we are having that we're having on solstice so originally we were going to have an open house for twisted stage studios on solstice um we are putting pushing that back to the new year and so solstice we're going to have a event here on livestorm on our on our live app here for light anchoring and in the light anchoring we're going to you know talk a lot more about light anchors there and as well as you know walk through the meditations everything else with anchoring these columns of light so um yeah that's tuesday and please do if you register and you want to come to the event please do get here a little early um you know log in a little early and check in because we have a limit of 100 people that can be signed up for that one well many people can sign up as they wish but the room only holds 100 so please do get in early if you do want to get into that event for sure um you just just don't know how many people will show up for that one um but the light anchoring class that we're going to do on tuesday will be at the same time that we're having these um programs here and on solstice the 21st but yeah, light anchoring, that was another one of the things that I wanted to share with the, the wisdom wand. Now, for me, Tuesday was of this week was a very transformable, magical day. So much happened. Um, actually, have a little prototype here. Oh my goodness. Not the pendant that I was expecting, but this is a prototype for the smaller wisdom wand. And I tell you this thing, when it came in, I was lightheaded for two hours. Um, it changed, something changed because as we grow in our understanding and awareness, which we're all growing leaps and bounds right now. Um, so as I grow in my understanding and awareness, that can be brought in through the tools. And so whatever came through in this little wisdom wand, 
holy smokes. And I don't know for certain if we're going to offer these or not. They're kind of a pain in the butt to make because you have to weld this piece on. We're still working with these. So at some point in time, I would like to offer these um, smaller versions of the wisdom wands. But anyway, so much new came through here. And whatever that new is, I don't know. But we put that into the wisdom wands. And we also put that into the wisdom ring. So we updated the wisdom rings as well. Again, I'm not sure what all the updates are because, you know, the thing about the wisdom wand is people keep asking me, okay, well, give me some tangible things that you do with the wisdom wand that you've done. And it's just that the work that we do with the wisdom wands is simply putting our attention to things and things change and shift. And when those things change and shift, it's like, you don't have the memories of them either. It's like, it's like they're gone. And so maybe I need to make a journal, but I don't really, eh, whatever. We can relive our old stuff that we go through it and we release, but we don't need to because then we can recreate it. So, so much shifts with the wisdom wand. Um, but another point of that is, is that so much of this is in these higher fields of consciousness which we do not have the hardware to really be able to see what is going on in these higher levels of consciousness. We're, we're just not at the moment equipped, but you know, I'd like to believe that at some moment we can be equipped. And you know, a lot of the work that we do like with Jeanette Crowley is to take us into these spaces so that we begin to attune to them. so that we can start to see these spaces. Um, so anyway, it's um, it's an amazing time right now with the spaces and places that we're going to. Um, all right, so we'll go over here down to the questions tab and we'll start out with some questions here. Um, let's see, Ethan, this is a comment. The wisdom wand is out for delivery by US Postal Service and since yesterday, I've been feeling its strong energy. I can't wait for the wand to arrive in a few hours. Eighth, and I cannot wait for you to get that wand in your hands. Um, pretty, pretty flipping amazing. Oh, um, with the wands, we are doing a sale on those right now on the Quantum Healer, the um, Golden Fire and Light wands, the Dowsing Rod, because it contains the energetics, and the Wisdom Wand. So right now, there is a coupon code that you can use, which is LIGHT, L-I-G-H-T, that coupon code is good all the way until solstice midnight. So if you don't have one of the wands, um, yeah, and you'd be able to watch this in a recording too, because we record all of these. So Tuesday will be recorded. So you'll be able to go back through and follow the meditations and everything. Um, you know, if you want to have the physical tool in your hand, but again, um, join us Tuesday. If you don't even own a wand, it is fine because these are quantum tools and we are going to teach you how to do this without owning a physical tool. So don't worry if you don't have a wisdom wand and you have, you know, a quantum healer, golden fire and light wand. Um, it's okay. We will walk you through the process. Uh, Renard, I've been sleeping with the wisdom wand. In my dream, whew, wow, <laughs> holy smokes. In my dream, I saw myself holding the regular wisdom ring and a light started flickering in the ring. Then I felt myself fall. I saw myself sleeping until I startled myself. Does the wisdom field typically assist with astral travel? So, you know, there are, there's so much that is coming into center into zero point that includes the astral bodies the pain bodies um all of these fractals of you are coming in so yes it would not surprise me if your astral body is more um alive more um perceivable it's, you know, that's part of the wisdom that these fields bring in is, is the knowing of you. So thank you for sharing that one, Renard. That's, that's pretty flipping fantastic. Like I said, I could feel that for you. Yeah. Um, Mary Louise, 
no longer fighting dark. Does this mean we don't need to do our pillar of light for protection? You know, um, protection is a, you know, and for years we've been trying to get away from the word protection because protection, I, uh, the, the connotation with protection is, is that I'm, you know, there's a lot of connotations to that, but some of those is the victim mentality. Some of those is I am separate from all, um, that, that is outside of me. That's, that's not my creation. Again, it comes to, you know, kind of the whole thing that is programmed in the human of, because we've lived it for so many eons is, is the victim, the perpetrator, all the stuff. So protection means, you know, to me, the connotation is, is that there's something bigger than me and there's going to be something outside that influences me. Um, you know, and this has taken us years to get there. Like when we used to do the grid clearing work, um, we fell into fear one time and cause we were using bubbles of protection, but we still fell in the fear. So we still got, you know, nailed. And then our big learning experience with this, you know, and that cosmic work that we used to do is, is that when we can stand in our light, we are untouchable, untouchable. And when you can stand more in your beingness that you are untouchable, there's no need for protection because then you are bigger than anything that could come in. That is EMFs, dense consciousness, experiences, whatever it is. Um, it is bringing you to that zero point space again that december 3rd meditation is huge coming into that space to where you are untouchable because you are a creator of this entire reality and you are um you're beyond any need for protection so yes um and that's it is is you know protection is also you know going back to the question of no longer fighting the dark um, because we're not fighting anything. We, um, we stand in our light and we welcome in everything and we become a transformer of it, the transformer of duality. And that is what the chalice energy was doing was the transformer of duality and the wisdom field contains that chalice and everything. So, I mean, it is just another step up of being that transformer of the duality. Uh, JR, are you saying we can use the wisdom wand, point it to water with the intention that it will bring in the wisdom energy instantaneously? Yes. Yes. Fun one. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I did here at the hot springs in this giant pool here last night. It was fun because I could feel it just rippling out into the water. Um, very fun. But so, yeah, anytime that I have my tea, whatever, I just run the wand because um, I'm still trying to figure out the concept of using like the, the wisdom field or that um, trio of rings, the, the water wisdom alchemist set. There still needs to be your attention onto it. So your intention is there. So you don't need to make a hard intention. Your soft intention is there when you go to wand your drink or you put the rings under it. You have the intention already of doing the work with your water. So you don't have to go any farther in intention, but attention. So right now I feel, and this is going to change, right now I feel that we still have to put our attention onto that water and know that field. So again, going back to that December 3rd uh, meditation and knowing that field of that water wisdom. And when you know that field, it only takes your attention onto that water with the wand and you're creating the field for that to restructure the water instantly. And I look forward to working here with a company this spring to do some water testing as well as our new biofeedback for our cell phone tabs. Um, Cause I think it's going to be huge what we can find with water. Well, let's see. Hey Mika, did the update of the alchemist set to the wisdom energy also include the silver set? And are you feeling a difference with the silver? Does the silver add more to the water? Um, so yes, Mika, the, the 
update that we did to the alchemist sets includes you know that silver pendant um you know and to and i cannot answer your question about um if i felt a difference in the silver since then because i haven't really been playing with the silver much i mean i have a silver ring here with the um with the wings of talk pendant but um i haven't sat with the silver to see you know the silver still does feel like a different field with um with that alchemist set yeah i you know the, the field does it is still different than the copper on that alchemist set in the silver versus the copper um but you know and it does feel like a more tangible refined field is is what it just feels like to me um in that silver just just looking at it um diana are the wisdom wands before this past tuesday also updated and the wisdom water rings as well yes so the the wisdom wands that we've created earlier the water wisdom rings and the alchemist sets any of those that we've ever created through time are all updated as we go in and we update the tools we're not updating the physical tool what we update is that the the that connect, where the tools are connected that higher dimensional field that we call the etheric templates and so when we um add to the etheric templates that higher dimensional counterpart of the tools it then goes into all of the tools that are created because they're all connected to those templates. Uh, does having the wand on your person create a wisdom field around you? Yes, I would totally say that. Um, yes, it does. It does. And, you know, and just like any of the tools when we carry them and use them they become a part of us you know we 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 attune to those and then we carry that field um and that's so huge that's so huge because then everybody that you come into contact it brings that remembrance to them like i say consciousness can spread so quickly on the planet it really can and you know everything is being held energetically for all of humanity to step into this and so again that's where i have such high hopes in the quickness and ease of of shifting it all because with consciousness comes all the beautiful beautiful changes in the world uh Johan, good morning. Can you please talk about the similarities and difference of the wisdom wand and the on the wings of talk? Um, so yes, you know, when you are using the wings of talk and you are creating a column of light, just like you would um, in our in our original wings of talk video, we talk about using the wings of talk to create that column of light and it creates that field. That field is also going to hold that energetics of the wisdom wand. Um, you know, the wisdom wand and the wings of talk are very similar in their energetics. And thank you for bringing up this question because that's, yeah i I've, i had because i hadn't looked at it and um they are a very similar energetic there's there's still something different between the two and i'm not sure what that is i mean they still present differently but they feel very very similar to me it's almost like the wisdom wand is like there's more of a of an orangish gold field and that field is it's, it's okay so it's almost like the wings of talk is more environmental but that affects everybody within that space where it's almost feels like the wisdom wand is bringing everything more in it's more concentrated it's more personal um is how that feels to me but yet there's still a lot a lot of similarities um Let's see, Mary Louise, I have one that looks 
a, a wand that a little one like the fairy wand will it do the same no um the fairy wands though it was interesting mary at the studio she always wears her fairy wand and she was comparing it to this one yesterday and they they work very well together <laughs> you know mary really liked the two together but no the the fairy wand is not carrying these other fields um you know the 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 wisdom tools really came in on october 30th of this year well october 30th to november 1st of 2021 is when the wisdom tools came in but those wisdom tools again that goes back into all the alchemist sets the set of three rings so it goes all the way back so really um you know on the timeline it goes back to almost a year since we've had the alchemist sets here that it goes you know that that wisdom came in uh, mika since heimdall is the one you work with and he is arcturian heimdall is the uh, guardian of our third templates um, and he's an arcturian any chance of bringing through any arcturian tools or a light ship regener genesis chamber healing practitioner ring yeah um you know our original ascension chamber which was called the 5d animator um is based on this regenesis chamber um which comes from the arcturians it, it was in the book from um tom kenyon the arcturian anthology he talked about that regenesis chamber of the arcturians and that is where the inspiration was to create the first ascension chamber the 5d animator and so that has been coming up more here recently about bringing in that energetics and it's interesting because yes i was just uh it's been a week ago that i was connecting with that and asking for some more of that style of energetics and technology to come into into being and i've actually seen it as a pendant and you know and that's why you know i made this wisdom wand is because i keep seeing some new pendant that is holding just the next step in energetics you know because we we're going to keep stepping here um even though this wisdom field is so beyond our comprehension still um it was it's only another step so um the regenesis chamber for healing yeah, I would love to be able to bring that through into, into more of the rings. How do, how do the new energies affect On the Wings of Talk? So actually when On the Wings of Talk was born, that is where that was the huge step that was holding the space for us to bring in that wisdom energetics. So the On the Wings of Talk now contains that wisdom energetics because basically the On the Wings of Talk was the step in and then we created that wisdom energetics and then we brought that back into the Wings of Talk. So, um, so yeah, it, th they're, they're tied together for sure. Um, so anyway, any of these new energies that we put back into the wisdom field and all that, yes, they affect the On the Wings of Talk as well. Um, so the on the wings of talk were also updated energetically uh mika are you finding soul to soul connections are easier with the wisdom wand it seems so to me almost instantaneous if the other wants to connect yes yes it really does help to facilitate those soul to soul connections um you know using this field it is amazing working with other people um because again, it's not like you're doing any work and it's not like you're going in and trying to fix and resolve and, and clear. It's, it's you're going in and you're holding that space and they just get vacuumed into that wisdom field, that zero point field, and all the work is done. Um, but you know so i mean as far as trying to work with other people but as far as connecting with other people yes because then it's like we are it's it's like it's clearing so many of the filters that we are starting to see in 
and feel and understand and know these other spaces, these other higher spaces where there's less separation and more, you know, connection to other souls. And so, yes, it is easier to go soul to soul with people with these new fields. Let's see, Renard, I've also noticed that wearing my wisdom wand as a pendant has brought out hostile energy at my job. I am allowing the surrender when I find myself wanting to fight back. Any insight on the uptick of negative vibes? So, all I could say is to just be in your peace and hold your space. Um, there's something in that energy that is for you, you know, because nothing happens to us that is um it's all our energy it's all our creation and so there is something in that for for you but two you know i just keep seeing to just hold your space and be in your peace and use that wisdom one field to just bring in that situation so instead of just passively passively being in your field in your peace when you are in that space of peace just bring in that situation or bring yourself into that situation with that energy and allow it to permeate that situation so um Yeah, I, 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 th I think you're getting that cleared up. Is there going to be a silver wisdom ring or wand? Good question. Don't know yet. We are still, we're still finding our footing with this wisdom energy and where it's going and what we're doing. So I'm not sure what new tools were, were in silver yet. Um, the mini wand is the only one that's, you know, coming up right now besides the generators and the Gaia sphere. But um, we'll definitely see where this all goes. Uh, Ethan, I had a dream where I was working with the wisdom wand together with the quantum healer pendant wand. Do you have any comments on using these two together? Um, no, you know, okay. Oh, I'm going to sip on this one. So there is something I feel of using these different frequencies, energetics, along with the wisdom field in that it's almost like there's a certain bandwidth of, of energy, of frequency, of, of awareness. There's a certain bandwidth that like, let's say your quantum healer covers and it covers everything in this bandwidth where the wisdom is outside of that it's a whole different energetics um and so it's almost like you have that wisdom field in more support of that bandwidth of energy that that quantum healer has so it's like it takes that field of the quantum healer and it brings in more support to what it is that that field is working on <sighs> So I hope you can feel that. That's, you know, that's what I, how it presents. Um, hey, Megan, where do we find previous lives? Um, so the previous lives are both on this uh, Livestorm platform. Um, you can go through there and, and access those previous lives with all the, you know, and you can access the questions and, and, the, and the comments. But if you actually go to our YouTube channel, um, if you go to the YouTube channel of twistedsage.com, there is um, a, a category of 50 Question Fridays. And under the 50 Question Fridays, our wonderful team member, Amber, um, has gone through and put down timestamps and questions and um, different tools that we talk about. So if you go to the YouTube, you can better easily navigate all of the 50 questions Fridays and all of the content that way. 
Good to see you here, Megan. April, when I'm home, I like to wear a lot of my tools together. Wings of Talk, Alchemist, Quantum Healer, Wisdom. What do you think? I think you're awesome. <laughs> you know, it, it is, I love to wear all the different tools together as well. You know, I'll check every day and, you know, in the clients that we see, the pictures that people send in for testimonials, it is awesome to see what everybody wears together, um, all the different tools. And so they're all in support and amplifying and holding space and harmonizing with each other. So when you wear those different tools, like the Wings of Talk and the Alchemist Set, the Quantum Healer, and that wisdom, it just, it, it amplifies the field. It just, um, it creates more of an interweaving. Like I say, that wisdom comes in and just supports all those other fields more. Um, so yeah, you know, definitely just do what feels good good with that with wearing the tools you can never do it wrong or do any harm um, all right so just going over here and checking out the comments um so some people are talking about using the tools there such as the wisdom wand um good quality of sleep been able to shift things quickly. Um, so let's see. Uh, Nia, I got a three inch ring from you five years ago around the Gem and Jam Festival. <laughs> Yay. Um, the Gem and Jam in Tucson. Should I send it back to get recalibrated? I also got a big ring that I sit in and meditate. What kind of energetic work do you recommend? Okay, so the rings that we created like five years ago, we have continuously updated a lot of those um, because as we update the energetics here, that goes into all the rings. But there are specific rings that... Um, you know, like, let's say a balance and harmony ring, which, you know, I'm assuming that you probably have a balance and harmony ring or gosh, it might even be the galactic ring that you have from five years ago. And those ones, the galactic ascension rings do not, they haven't, they, they don't receive as many of the updates as we get into the new tools, like the golden fire, the, um, all the alchemist rings, the wisdom ring, those do not update into a lot of those older tools. Um, so it's something that with that, um, with one of the older rings, what I would suggest is one of the small alchemist rings. We have like a three inch and a three and a half inch. Um, and in grabbing one of those, and um, using that to update your ring because we have a lot of people who've talked about using the new wisdom rings along with another ring because they when you hold two rings together they create a field between them and when you take a wisdom ring in one hand and one of the older rings or a crystal or somebody else's energy tool whatever it is and you bring that into the other and you work with them together it will update and shift and change to a higher connection, whatever tool or ring or crystal or whatever it is that you're working on. Just by bringing it into that field of the wisdom, watching it, being aware, your intention right there, again, is already there to shift the energetics of the tool you're working with. So that would be my suggestion on any of the older tools is to add a wisdom ring to it. And that's the same with like, so your big ring that you have, um, when you have a larger practitioner ring or, you know, just any ring and you bring in that wisdom ring and you set inside of it, and this works with any of the rings. It doesn't have to be a wisdom ring. It could be a golden fire ring that you bring inside of another older tensor ring. And then at that time, it is carrying the energetics like a golden fire ring. You would have to leave that smaller ring inside of your larger, older ring for it to carry that golden fire energetics. 
But with the wisdom rings, it is actually changing that tool on a permanent level so you don't have to keep that wisdom ring inside of it. Um, so hopefully that, that answers that um, question. But uh, also the question, what kind of energetic work do you recommend with sitting in, in that and meditating? Um, you know, again, going back to that December 3rd, 50 question Friday, and there towards the end doing that zero point in that attunement to that wisdom water ring um, is huge. And, you know, you might even be able to shift the tools that you have by doing that, by bringing in that wisdom field. Because using a wisdom ring physically with your other tool is the same as you bringing in through consciousness from the heart, bringing in that consciousness into your field and then asking that to be imparted into the tool. So if you just do that meditation from December 3rd and you're sitting in that big ring, just intend that that energetics be a part of that ring. Oh, Megan, need some cacao in the mug. Double up on the magic, <laughs> right? Um, thanks for all making all the tools. Promote. I used them daily and promoted them on my web show last night. Ah, thank you, Megan, for promoting the tools. Um, thank you very much. Um, Connie, I've been feeling, sensing all sorts of changes, seeing things on the periphery of my vision this last week. Yeah, it's been pretty wild this last last week or two. Um, I'm seeing another comment. Use the wisdom water rings in the bath. Wow, amazing. The water feels lighter, like the water has no weight. Super buoyant and silky. Peaceful and high vibe. Tea and water tastes a little sweet and feels smooth. Thank you. Yeah, it is fun using these in 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 the in the water in the baths. Um, let's see, Linda I received my wisdom wand and I slept with it within the twenty sixth century generation ring. Is this a repo appropriate combination for me? Most definitely, it is. Um, sleeping with the wisdom wands is is huge. It's it's a big thing. As, as a lot of you have even noted that there's different things happening in dream time. Um, it's something with this field. It's pretty amazing. But yeah, when you are inside of like that 26th century generation ring, it's just holding more space and it's just, you know, amplifying might not be the right word, but it's, it's allowing more in it's, it's allowing the wisdom to work more. So I guess it is kind of amplifying. Carla, um, you just ordered two of the large golden fire rings should be delivered today. I look forward to meditating in them. However, however, don't want to be dependent on the tools. Do we eventually adopt their energy without their physical presence? Yes, most definitely. All the tools that we create as my late friend, Scott, um, Scott, the master crystal alchemist would always say, Scott Miller, these tools are training wheels. So they're space holders, they're training wheels, and then we get to the point to where we don't need them. You know, I was having a talk with somebody about that the other day, you know, and they said, well, you know, in my infinite wisdom of my soul, I don't need any tools whatsoever. You know, I can just, I got this. And yeah, that's true. If you are truly bringing in your infinite wisdom of the soul, but to me, the tools are still there. It's kind of like a remembrance, a knowing, a, um, you know, it's something that maybe our soul on some level knows this wisdom field. But until the human steps into this wisdom field, it's, it's like then it is, it's clicking, you know, it, it's bringing in the remembrance of everything. So, you know... To me, the tools are still a space holder, a knowingness, a training wheel to get us reconnected to all of that. Um, so as far as the question goes about becoming dependent on the tools and do we eventually um, 
adapt, adopt that energetics. Exactly. That is what we do is we then start to carry what is in the highest and best for us of the energetics of these tools. Um, and so, I mean, I don't even need a cell phone tab anymore. I carry the cell phone tab just for, for looks, but, um, is something that's within my field. It goes back to that whole concept of protection is that I know that I'm bigger than what the field of this is and that I am untouchable the cell phone field. Um, you know, it just goes into that whole concept as well. So, I mean, those are two concepts, but they, they work together. Um, yeah, what about tuning forks to update the ring? Um, you know, tuning forks are going to work in, okay, so sound is a great thing. Sound is a carrier wave. You can use sound for a lot of things, but it is still a very small band with the frequency. Um, you know, so sound is a small bandwidth um, where we are working more beyond light and frequencies. Like the harmonizer ring goes to the ceiling of this magnetic world, electromagnetics, that is all light, frequency, all of this. You step beyond that into consciousness where there are no frequencies, there is no light. It's consciousness. It's not in this electromagnetic world. And so the updating of the tools we do from that space to then bring in to this world of physical vibration. Um, yeah, but you know, the tuning forks in the tensor fields work phenomenally well together though, because you know, the tensor fields are a carrier way for these higher dimensional, higher consciousness energetics. And a tuning fork is also a carrier wave because sound's a carrier wave. And so you can do a lot with sound. And so when you bring a tensor field together, your intentions, um, your voice, your whatever your vibration sound is, it, it just, it brings you a, a larger package. Um, again, it's kind of like using the wisdom field and in another field, this other bandwidth is that all this consciousness comes through and supports and amplifies that field. Like let's say the tuning forks, that vibration, physical vibration, it, it amplifies that it, um, supports that. Um, hopefully, well, let's see. Yeah. The question over here, JR, is the wisdom ring just as powerful as the wisdom wand? No, there's something different about this wisdom wand. Um, the wisdom rings, it seemed, as soon as the wisdom wand came in, it's like the wisdom rings is just like, meh, you know, they're pretty phenomenal, but you know, eh. um, but yesterday we updated the wisdom rings a bit. Um, but there's just something different about the wisdom wand. And to me, it's, it's like that field, um, that I keep seeing with the wisdom wand. It's, it's like this golden orangish field and it's like a column kind of and it's like um it's it's more condensed compact um full um it's very you know it's tangible versus the wisdom ring that it's like to me it's like lighter airier it's it's a it's a beautiful field but it's like it takes more of your attention. Um, it takes more uh, energy is not the right word. It takes, you know, it takes more of your, of you to do the work with that wisdom ring than it does with the wisdom wand. Um, so the wisdom wand is more powerful, compact. Um, so the wisdom rings are still phenomenal phenomenal, phenomenal, because it carries that field. And it's that field truly that we're working with. Um, you know, so like with the wisdom wand, when I'm holding it and something comes into my uh, attention, um, you know, like last night it was my daughter staying over at a friend's house and, um, you know, she wanted her mom to come pick her up because I'm here in Den in Colorado. 
And um, so I couldn't go get her. So she wanted her mom to go pick her up at midnight last night. And I asked her, you know, about what it was. It was just, you know, do some energy work to clear things. And so all I did was just um, tap into my daughter and that space that she was staying in and all those that were there. And I just hold that um, attention, my awareness onto there. At the same time, I was holding the wand. And it's like it just shifted. It just it shifted everything. And she was fine. She's good. Um, and I could feel a lot of shifts taking place with both the environment and the people that were there and her. Um, so with using the wisdom wand, to me, do well. Okay. So doing that work of shifting that would be the same with the wisdom ring because you're bringing through that energetic of the, of the wisdom field. So if I was going to use the wisdom ring to do that same work, it would be the same and have the same results. Um, the same results in that I just put my attention to there while I'm holding the ring because this, the ring is just simply a space for you to put your attention with the wisdom field and your attention onto what you're working on. And the shift will occur the same. Um, so I'm kind of taking this around in circles because I thought I had a example of kind of the differences between the wisdom wand and the wisdom ring there to get, but I, but that wasn't a difference. Those are very the same. Um, the wisdom wand's been very elusive. I still have not been able to really promote this and do a big write up on it because I don't know what to say. It is so far beyond our awareness. Um, but yet it's huge. And I know that there are the shifts taking place. I just really cannot put my finger on them. I can say that for the past three days, has been the most profound, happy, peaceful, clear time I think that I have ever felt as a human. Um, it's It's been profound. Ethan, I keep seeing myself working with a wisdom generator. Do you know when they are coming out to be used? Good question, Nathan. I think we are getting close. So the wisdom generators, I feel, are going to be another one of the next steps in um, to me, the wisdom generators are still creating some kind of a connection between all densities, dimensions, um, something. It's connecting all different layers. And I think that's going to be, you know, I feel like it's like that ladder that I keep talking about where you come in on certain rungs. And before we even got into doing this wisdom tools, I kept seeing a generator that does like everything. Um, so I think there's something coming with this wisdom generator. So I know the, the wisdom Gaia sphere, I think we'll probably start working on that one some more because those ones are innately just wonderful tools, but the, um, and I think we'll have some prototypes up here soon on the prototype page of the wisdom Gaia spheres. Some of the ones that we're not going to make them in that particular, um, size or gauge or whatever that we'll put up onto the prototype page here at some point in time. Um, but the wisdom Gaia spheres are just seem to be innately there already where those wisdom generators, there is something cool and new coming through those. And um, it's hard to say when that's going to come in. It's dependent on me and my level. It's dependent on the level of consciousness on the planet. It's dependable on, you know, us all being, being ready to bring that in. And, um, but there's a lot of great things coming and Ethan, yeah, that wisdom generator. I can't wait for, I can't wait for all these fun new tools to start getting into, into people's hands that are doing fantastic, phenomenal work with them. Um, any thoughts on mixing ionized water with water focused, water focused tensors? Um, I'm not sure. 
Oh, I can't. And my site is not here at the moment either. So I'm not sure about that one, Megan, with working with ionized water. Um, all right. Well, I think if we don't have any more questions, would love to see you all on solstice. Um, and again, that one's going to be recorded. But um, yeah, these wisdom wands are pretty flipping amazing, you guys. So, um, and whether you own one or not, we're going to basically attune you to it on Tuesday. So on our solstice event. So show up to our solstice event and um, or watch the recording afterwards. And we should be able to get you caught up to speed on the wisdom wand, um, you know, to work with it energetically. Again, quantum tools, and we will teach you how to use them without the physical tool. But the physical tools are phenomenal. Um, for me, I wand everything. Um, I don't know. It's, it's been an amazing journey with these. All right. Well, I guess I have nothing else to share this morning for updates. I'm pretty sure we covered all the updates. And um, I don't think we're doing a meditation this morning. We'll save that for Tuesday. And yeah, you guys have a fantastic weekend and phenomenal solstice if we don't see you before then or by then. And yeah, enjoy.